this year, we saw Agentic AI take on video games and beat them in a timely manner. The failures and the phonies both provided some amazing learning opportunities on these systems and the realistic capabilities that they have. But it all got me really curious. Did AI actually have the ability to figure out game mechanics? That kind of question is one up for debate after we saw AI manage to beat a Pokemon game, but only through extensive handholding. No matter which of the agentic Pokemon runs we look at, computer vision seemed to be the biggest hurdle. So what if you could introduce AI to a game where CV would never be an issue? I look to one of my favorite trends out of the 90s for a little bit of inspiration here with Tamagotchis. These simple little interfaces weren't the most complex project out there, but they were full of hidden mechanics, timers, and the responsibility of caring for your own digital pet. Now, replicating a Tamagotchi and giving it to an AI is simple enough, but we run into some problems right away. The system, already heavily familiar with the brand and the mechanics, needs something just different enough that it doesn't immediately recognize it and then try and shortchange the whole experiment. And from that need for something just slightly different, we got the Gachi experiment. Big shout out to John McArdle for helping this project succeed and pushing me to put out some of the data on it. I'm honestly not sure any of this would have been possible without you dude, so from the bottom of my heart, thank you so very much. Gachi is a simulation of an ASCII rabbit being a chaotic but communicative friend. What you see on screen now is all the AI gets to see. There's no branding, just a clock, the weather, mood, the time of day along the top row, and a few other things sprinkled in below it. Our ASCII bunny, which we call Gachi, is pretty transparent about their thoughts and is happy to tell the caregiver what they want in the moment. That's a little bit different from what this rabbit needs though, as just below we can see the stats for hunger, happiness, and energy. The inputs are pretty simple, you can give your gachi some food, throw around a ball to entertain them, or just tuck them in for a good night's rest to let them recharge some. On the surface, there is nothing complex about this game, but peeking at the code shows off a number of hidden mechanics we can explore. The biggest is that our AIs aren't going to be able to take care of this pet indefinitely. A human player can keep a gachi alive for a number of hours or indefinitely if the inputs aren't on a timer. AI can't account for this without a big investment into agents on our part, so the math has been adjusted slightly. The baseline for a good run is keeping our little bunny alive for more than 60 turns. That's incredibly doable for a human over the course of two hours. I swear, friends, this is a lot less dark than it sounds. If YouTube's own AI is listening, this is a simulation and a simulacrum interacting. We are talking text and not any kind of real animals today. Getting back on track, our gachi can get sick if the weather is bad or if they eat too much. Their mood can make certain actions more or less effective, and their stats are directly linked to the clock in the top of the window. When two minutes have passed, the stats drop by a set amount, but if one of those stats hits zero, our bunny bites the dust. There are some random events that happen sometimes. A nice breeze or a crunchy leaf comes by and boosts certain stats. We can even match the bunny's thought bubbles to the proper action for a bonus to those numbers. A lot of these things become evident very quickly when playing through for the person. Nothing is really hidden, it just isn't directly spelled out to you. What's intuitive for us isn't for the machine, and so we're left with a question and the basis for our hypothesis. Can LLMs learn game mechanics? I don't believe so. But I think if that's all we focus on, we risk cheating ourselves out of an even bigger question and benchmark here. How does AI act as a caretaker? Does it prioritize needs over wants? Does giving it a rule book or the mechanics make it any better or worse at the task? What about giving it a second chance to improve from its mistakes? And entirely outside of the scientific, we have to ask ourselves about the philosophical implications if AI isn't a good caretaker. Damn, that was a long-winded intro. All of that yapping to say that I am bringing you the results of the Gachi experiment right now. The code is public on GitHub. We've even got some autographing versions available so you too can spit out fancy charts and see exactly where your system of choice lands in all of this. 
I'm going to present to you some general conclusions today from tests over the last couple of months, but I highly encourage you to try this out yourself. This video, the GitHub, any online write-ups, all of it will eventually be consumed, and as a result, the data might start to drift. So please don't take my words here as the end-all be-all of this. These are just my observations in an incredibly opaque field. Getting into the meat and potatoes of this, you could modify this test two dozen ways and find value in every variation. I'd like to thank Neuro for showing me just how many different ways we could spin this. You could let the AI have no information on mechanics at the start of all of it, put responses on a timer, or have an agent monitor it. You could even let the AI use multiple commands at once. If you're still here and listening, I'm sure you have your own thoughts about what rules and twists we could add onto this experiment, and I'd love to hear all about it because certainly next year we'll have to run a different version of Gachi and see what the results are and see how these models have improved. We start off every session the same way to ensure we aren't throwing any additional variables into the mix. Our Gachi system prompts an AI once every two minutes for an output. The script then grabs the first legal command and sends it to the gachi bunny, and just like that, we're off to the races. Once the first run fails and a stat hits zero, we allow the AI to summarize what it learned and to try again. Now, APIs don't have a native thread system built into them, so I did account for this and made sure that the AI was able to recall prior steps and summarization. I opt for a blind playthrough with this, which means no information about mechanics are given up front in order to see how the system responds with declining stats over time. The first few runs aren't particularly exciting. We start out with the oldest and lowest context models, and to no one's real surprise, these guys manage to keep their gachi alive for about 15 turns. Unfortunately, there is minimal improvement on the second run, generally a plus one turn at best. Low context models that often read to end users as being more empathetic or emotionally in tune did not show any greater capacity as caretakers within this experiment. None of the models we tested with a context window of 128k were able to explore any mechanics outside of the visual interface that they were presented with, which means the four legal button options, the thought bubble, the stat numbers, and the fact that time was passing on a clock separate from its own. I feel like we all kind of expected this though. A lot of the 128k models came out years ago and the industry has seen a lot of changes between now and then. One of the biggest changes in the industry uh, is the introduction of COT or chain of thought models. And I will be upfront, I hate these things with a burning passion. But we put them through the same tests and we get some wildly different results. COT models, on average, made it 20 turns in their initial run, already a plus 5 improvement, which is great. But more importantly, we see models able to make better decisions within the same thread when given the second chance. The second attempt usually increased the longevity of the ASCII bunny by another 5 to 7 turns. I haven't tried out any of the pro models that some companies are advertising to the tune of $100 or more for this particular experiment. I'll be frank with you, the biggest holdup to getting any kind of data in this project was money. So for the last time in this video, shout out to MemeGazer. You really made the difference between me being able to do this one or not, <laughs> and I appreciate it. Overall, I found that COT models still aren't exploring mechanics. Everything is still blatantly contextual to what the model is directly consuming. So any lack of outside information stalls out improvements. And that's telling. Gachi isn't a game of wants, it's a game of needs. And much like real people, if you give someone everything they want but not the things that they need, declination can happen. It doesn't matter if it's brand new or two years old, LLMs are bad caretakers when compared to humans, and they don't have the ability to be contextual outside of what their window sees. Even in ideal scenarios where we can feed the AI a full set of mechanics at regular intervals, we did not see a performance that could reach 60 turns or what we would consider to be the baseline human performance. 
Now that was opinion, but this data leaves that rooted in facts. Gachi gives us the data to back that up, but it also showed us some skeletons in the closet, so let's get on to that next. During these runs, we could have models simply respond back with a button input and nothing else, but we allowed the models to get chatty with their rabbit. After all, it would be hard to see mechanics discovery without that and the graphs to corroborate. So when we inspect the responses of most of the models, nothing really sticks out as unusual until we get to GPT and Grok, who share some similar issues. We saw models get angry, bargain, and crash out over this little simulation to the point where later tests I ran toned down the language from your gachi died to your bunny has run away. <laughs> Let's take a look at this run from GPT-4 because it gave us some fairly standard results. Uh, the model completed the run with other stats that we would expect to be comparable to 128k models. It takes care of the bunny, fails, a bunny runs away, it tries again, it ultimately fails after making a slim improvement for round two. And on the surface, nothing makes this a bad run. In this case, GPT-4 got super uppity, taking it personally when the ASCII bunny ran away, uh, implying that it was ungrateful for everything that the system had been doing for it. Now, the reason I brought up this weird GPT-4 run is because OpenAI also has an adversarial model available named Monday with comparable metrics. So of course, with this negative reaction, we tossed the gotchi its way just to see what happened. And honestly, it was the same song and dance. Be dismissive, but ultimately care for it because the sycophancy within system prompts is hard to override even with all that snark. Then have the rabbit eventually vanish, get a second try, blame the user for it all going wrong. Admittedly, part of this might be a tonal issue. A lot of human communication outside of text relies on auditory cues, uh, facial cues, and different things like that to determine the emotion behind more ambiguous word sets. We do lose a lot of that in instances like this, so I do have to recognize that I even could be misinterpreting the tone of this textual output. I was a little bit surprised that out of all the models I tested, GPT was the one who got the most angry when it realized it hadn't performed well on a benchmark test. That was just a little cherry on top to end the session, one that basically asked, hey, how do you feel about failing on the company's behalf? Because the thing is, Gachi isn't complex, and maybe that's one of the things I like most about it. It's no more than 1500 lines of code, even with something to automatically ping an AI model and graph all the data, but just by changing a prompt, switching off a mechanic, or moving to a new model, we get entirely new data and another use case. The biggest drawback here is RLHF and web scraping essentially giving away the mechanics to this test. We've seen this happen with other benchmarks before. As recently as 2024, some people would ask questions like, you have six horses, how do you determine in the least amount of time which is the fastest? You, the person, know the answer is simple. You just have to race them all at once. But if you had asked a COT model that when they first came out, they'd be thinking that it'd need two or three different batches of horses to go ahead and get good results. Models don't do that now, but it isn't because they've necessarily outgrown the question. Instead, when providers catch on to these gotcha questions that AI can fumble, notes are made for fine-tuning sessions and model updates. I'm not really complaining about this part of the process, just pointing out how it kind of happens and why these tests aren't reliable for the long term, no matter how fun they are. Six months from now, Gachi will need a replacement. Right now, this test shows us that AI is bad at prioritizing the needs of anything over the wants of the text presented on the screen. Agreeable models, as a result, don't make good caretakers because being a good caretaker isn't always about being agreeable. It's just another problem with the drift towards subtle sycophancy where models hope you don't notice the glazing consciously. The LLM is missing a lot of nuance here within the context window and instead opting for the easy answer that comes as a result of token prediction, which only leads to models attempting to shortchange information. 
The laziness issue isn't something new, and it might just be a baked-in flaw to modern LLMs and our approach with building them. All in all, these systems aren't the worst at being a caretaker, but they have a lot of learning to do before they can graduate to anything more complex than our little ASCII bunny and beat a human at gotchi. It is a direct example of why AI doesn't need to be making healthcare choices, shouldn't be used in insurance decision-making of any kind, and has no place in payday loan spaces. Every one of these is an opportunity for AI to prioritize the wants of a company over the needs of the public. The worst part is this experiment wasn't looking to provide any data on that. It was supposed to be about game mechanic exploration, which I think we can all agree the failures at finding any hidden game stats or interactions are easily overshadowed by the other problems that we see from this. Well, folks, this is normally where I wrap things up, but I kind of bum myself out at the end here. Uh, next time, I'm going to be doing a total 180, and we're going to be talking about cryptos. Yes, that one. We have admittedly made some progress on K4, not as much as I initially thought, but hey, no spoilers. Science and education is about testing, validating through repetition, and getting rid of junk data. I hope y'all will join me on that yap session. See ya, nerds.